So first of all, welcome to our first webinar. Apologies if there's any hiccups along the way and everything like that. Um, we're gonna try to keep this kind of high level. Um, it's kind of hard to know everybody's interest right off the bat with the first webinar. So we would love any feedback along the way or after webinar. Um, with that, we're gonna get right into it. And next slide. As I said, I'm Kevin Swearingen. I'm the UX Director at Boulder Insight. With me today is Chris Cox. He's the founder over at Boulder Insight. Hello, hello. We'll do next. And then we're a, a Tableau partner and we're a consulting firm. We specialize in strategy, training, templates, and Tableau automation. So right off the bat, here's some examples of our work. And this is what we talk about when we talk about building wow factor dashboards and achieving kind of a ninja level in Tableau. We're gonna take some time today to tell you our methodology, how we walk through things and give you guys some pointers on how to really make Tableau work for you. Um, with that, I guess I'll dive right into it. Um, our PDA, uh, sorry, our method, <laughs> Sorry guys, like I said, first webinar. Our PDA is our Tableau adoption methodology. This is what we use to actually achieve the caliber of dashboards that we create for our clients. And it's really not just one thing. It's not one trick. It's actually a combination of three different elements and that really bring this you know, dashboard to life. Next slide, Chris. When we talk about PDA, we're not talking about this type of PDA. We're actually talking about purpose, data story, and attraction. These three things are areas that we focus on to really create these like award-winning dashboards. Kind of think of it, we have not won an award. Um, but we should have. We should totally win awards. So I'm gonna hand it off to Chris, <clears throat> who's gonna kind of go over the Tableau mindset. I'm hoping most of you on the phone actually have used Tableau, but if not, this is really gonna help you understand like why moving from Excel to Tableau um, is hard for some people and really how to explain why using Tableau over like Excel and other things. So with that, right. take it away, Chris. Thanks, thanks Kevin. So, so really kind of the first thing uh, that I like to go over when, you, when, you're, when, you're, when you're thinking about Tableau is, is that you know, we've, we've, all, we've all kind of come up with this, this, with this whole, uh, whole, whole Excel background. So a lot of times um, you kind of feel more confident having a cross tab you want to see the numbers. Uh, clients always ask us for those, and we have to kind of do this song and dance to get around it. Uh, but I kind of have this way to explain it that I think may, may make sense and kind of help you break out of the whole uh, Excel mindset. So like, for example, here, I just have a kind of a grid of numbers, nothing really, really kind of earth, earth shattering. And, and, so, and so if I was to ask you to count the number of threes, and you could do it, but it takes some time. I could use, use, use a conditional formatting type of trick like you would do in Excel, and I can make that easier. I can tell you what that is. But, but, but the thing is, is that when you think about numbers, um, really the, 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 the number of threes or nines or whatever I have on this page really doesn't matter. What's gonna matter is how that number compares to other numbers like it. So, so you, get, you get a lot of people, like if I just give you this one, so that, so that three by itself doesn't mean anything. So people always ask for, ask for actually cross tabs. So that's actually great. I can give you all of your sales for the last nine years. And this may be great, but what you wanna know, and, and if you think about it with your kind of business hat on, what you're gonna to wanna to know if you're using this data is you're gonna know, okay, well, is, is, my, is my 12 threes, is that higher or lower than the average? Well, having that in the cross tab, of course I can do it, but it's gonna take me some time. I gotta do the math. I'm not totally sure. I probably would pull it down in Excel and do that versus just have it laid out in a simple bar chart, you know, is now I can answer any sort of question you want. I can tell you that, that the 12 threes are higher than the average. It's tied for third slash fourth place with sevens. Um, and, you know, our, our, our worst number is nine. Uh, so those are things that you want to know. So keeping, keeping your data in, in a context um, is always, always really key. Um, and so with that being said, so, so sometimes people think, okay, well, if I'm just doing bar graphs or if I'm doing graphs in general, then I, then I am, then I am doing, doing, doing like visual analysis. I'm going to give you an example. I'm going to kind of build it from scratch here. 
of something that that, that just that we just did recently. Uh, we had had a client that said, "Hey, we we actually want to know um, we want to know budget um, our our budget by product, and and, and we want to actually whoops budget by product, and we, we want to compare that with with the uh, the uh, spent." Um, a little quick tip here. I'm going to build a um, uh, build this like a combined access. Let me actually back up and start over. Actually, one more thing. So when you're when you're when you're building uh, Tableau dashboards or or uh, views, um, kind of the, the the number one tip I would tell you is always start 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 with a measure. And the reason why is because it because it, it automatically puts it into graph form. So if I double click on let's do the same way again. If I double click on budget, then it's going to pop it into my my view. If I double click on category, it's going to automatically build that graph. If I did that exact same same field, subcategory and budget, but I did them in the opposite order, then it's going to put in the names and it's going to put in my budget as this whole cross tab. So start starting with a measure is always better. It's going to sum things up faster. Um, and that's a little bit of a different um, mindset than Excel. Because Excel, you want to think about your columns first versus in Tableau, you want to think about your data first. You want to think, think about your measures, things you want to do math on. Okay, so if I start out with budget and I look at uh, pro product, product uh, sub sub uh, category, and then let's say say I want to create this this this, this a combined axis chart. I'm going to drag spend over to this axis until the two rulers pop up, and what that's going to do for me is that's going to put in place place this this whole measured names measured values field. So now I have budget and spend broken out. I can click measured names, hold down control, and also drag that to color. Okay, so so um, so I had, had, had a client recently ask ask for this. They said, "Well, we 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 actually need to know budget and spend by product." And and so you might think this is visual, but I, but I got a couple problems. Problems are I really can't sort this because it's actually been measured name measured values. There's a little bit of sorting, but it only sorts inside the the pane. Um, it's just actually alphabetical, so it doesn't really do what I want it to do. But if you start thinking about it like like a like an analyst, um, what would what would somebody do with their their budget and spend by by product? <clears throat> well, they would probably want to know what percent of spend have I used up of my 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 budget, or what what, what percent of budget have I already spent, right? So I might write write some calculation that looks like this. Very very simple. You sum up your spend and you divide by your sum of sum of, sum of budget. Okay, so now if I use this one instead, start with a measure, subcategory, I'll flip it on its side, and then now this one sorts. Okay, and I'll color it green because it's spent. Um, so now I can tell you that the the product that we have spent spent most of our budget on is actually labels. Okay, I'm, I'm going to pull these into a dashboard. So it's, so it's easier to see. So I can see that labels are the number one. But if I find labels over here, I probably wouldn't have noticed it because it's such a small, small number. And, and I already have actions on this, I believe. I have, um, have like a highlight action. I'll show you this really quick. This is very simple. So um, dashboard actions highlight, and then just hit select. So whenever I click something, it's gonna highlight it in the other graph. So now if I click labels, it shows me where that is. Okay, so this is this is a good good start, um, but but I really want to get get to the to to our whole purpose. That's what we're doing all this for. If you understand the purpose that your that your client um, or or you know, either internal or external is trying to use this for, you want to get them to the answer fast. So labels is is the is the biggest um, is the biggest percent to, to uh, is the biggest spent per budget. But it's a small, it's a small uh, budget. So maybe I want to use size. Something that's often underused is is the size chart with bar charts. So I can drag budget to spend, and now, very quickly, I'll make, make this entire view for a second. Is yes, I got 42%, but it's a very thin bar. So my eye kind of immediately goes down to a very thick bar, office machines, which is a th th third of the way through their budget, and it looks like it's like the biggest budget. Right, so kind of a quick way to really call this out, and now I, and now I'm actually correct. So, office machines is a third of the way through their budget, and it's and it's, and it's the biggest one. So so little things like this, um, really talking to your uh, to your users to understand the purpose of what they're using 
Tableau 4, and then you come up with the best visual way to, to, uh, to get them to their answers faster. Okay, so let me, uh, let me jump back over to our, um, to our presentation here for a second. And these are kind of the tips that we, that we went through. So I want you to think, think of visually and try to break out of that uh, Excel mindset. Your, your, your users shouldn't have to do math on their own. Um, I often, like, like in an example I show with a budget and spend, um, I very find, a lot of times I find users say, oh, well, just give me the data. I can download it and do something with it. Well, if you tell me what you're doing, then I can do the math for you. And then, and, and then ha have, ha have a purpose. So every view, every dashboard should have a proper purpose. All right. So I will pause there and go back to Kevin for the Thanks, next Chris. step. One thing I'd add real quick, it's not only important for you to break the Excel mindset, it's important for you to help people that have no clue about Tableau or how to visualize data, help them break the mindset because that's your number one thing you're up against usually when you're trying to go to a visual data system. Sorry, Absolutely. Like um, yeah, and, and, yeah and, uh, and to hammer on that a little bit more, um, I think, think, think finance is the hardest to get, to get on board, um, but, but often if you sit with them just for a little bit, and you know, ask them what they're doing, and when you come up with the answer faster than they did, then it seems to seems to work. But just a tip on that. Okay, now we're going to go right into attraction. Um, this is the piece that I really play a pivotal role in the company in. Um, attraction is really a lot more than just making data look pretty. It's about like evoking emotion and getting people to actually start to look at the data. So. One of the problems with Excel, if you build an Excel sheet and you've got 200 lines on your report, people just read the five that apply to them. And Chris, can you go back to the previous slide real quick? The, the problem is they're not going to read the whole data story. So giving people a way into the data story and a way to explore the data story, quite frankly, in a way that you lay out because you're the expert. You're the one that does visualization for a living, right? So these tactics using UI's principles can really, really help you tell the data story and get people moving through the data story. And next slide. So I know it sounds silly. You're an analyst, right? You do data. This is the art world. You don't want anything to do with this. This is silly. This statement is very true. Anything you view on a computer can benefit by using UI and UX principles. So we're used to using apps. We're used to using websites, right? You don't want to build an experience that someone doesn't know how to navigate. And that's basically, you know, the principles that we apply and what we use. And with that, I'm going to just kind of show you some comparisons about where Tableau starts and then where we finish, quite frankly. So this one right here, this is what we're used to seeing in Tableau. This is a data set on coffee stores that Tableau offers. And this is just somebody that did this on tab on tab and posted it to Tableau Public. It's fine. You know what I mean? Um, other than like they really boiled the love for coffee out of it, right? Like it, it looks like a thousand other reports you want to ignore right off the bat. So you can do things with it. Just what, what makes Tableau great, right? You can click, you know, region, and then you can go down. You can see Mocha is, you know, outperforming everything else. You can drill down into it and start analyzing it but it doesn't really follow any UI and UX standards. The user doesn't know where to start. The user's not excited to use this. You know, when you get an app and you're excited, that's the feeling you want people to have. So we'll jump to a makeover we did. So same data. This is the exact same data. You can click on central, you can drill into Mocha, but you can see we use color differently. You can see we're on darker colors instead of lighter colors and it really makes the data pop. You can tell we told a meaningful story that kind of engaged people. So we added a secondary data source that allowed, you know, to make the side possible so that it encouraged you to click. So if you want to click on another coffee and see how it's performing, you actually get a different recipe and everything like that. So for this exercise, it was kind of a bell and a whistle and showing off. And we'll go into how we built this in another webinar. But when you have public facing data, you need to engage users, right? So if they're on a website, they hit your data, you want them to engage. They're not going to engage unless you make it exciting for them or make it pleasing for them. A lot of strategies like that went into this. 
Um, and then Chris, I think I'm ready to jump to ARP when online. Here's an example of a client we had when Chris pulls it up finally. Sorry. Um, and this is on Tableau Public, so forgive us, it's gonna run a little slow. Um, we have a client, ARP, and we absolutely adore them and they adore us, at least I hope they do. At least they did last time we talked to them. Um, but anyway, they have survey data. They survey like um, different cities and all that. They bring it all together and it's information about community. It's information about people, how they live, what they do, how they interact. It's let really me let me jump in right there one second. Yep. So if you if anybody on the call has survey data, it, it is probably the hardest data to work with ever. And we could probably spend an entire hour just talking about different strategies to pivot and turn that data to make it usable. So this this wasn't easy, even even though th what he's going to go through uh, will kind of show you better ways to do it. But even to get to where this dashboard is, you're seeing um, is kind of kind of a kind of a big big feat because survey data is so so kind of you know badly formed. So we'll talk about a couple of UI you know pra UI UX practices right now. I don't know how to navigate this. When I get here, my brain doesn't know what to do. I don't have a jump off point, right? Do I, do I click here? Do I click here? Do I click here? Let's, sorry, this screen's duplicating for some reason, Chris. It stinks. But, but basically, your brain doesn't know where to start. The other thing that happens is the navigation is weird. You will never see a website that has navigation and again, apologies, that has navigation going down the left side. Yet in Tableau, that's the default. That's where everybody throws it. That's even where Tableau throws it. If you go to Amazon, you go to any, you know, website, the navigation works the best when it's on the right. That's why you see it over there in every shopping cart you've ever on the seen. Left. On the left, sorry. So navigation like that. The other thing is there's no color story here. So is... 80% good or bad, you don't know that. Like you have no way of knowing what you're looking at. A gap, a gap calculation, I don't even know what that means. And I can't even do the math. So let's say I didn't know what a gap, gap calculation is, which I do, but I can't even do the math here to understand that. I, can't, I don't know how to apply that. I don't know what to do with that. Um, another problem is um, losing the relationship. So Right now, if you look at community rating, and Chris, you might need to annotate, because every time I annotate it, dupes. Apologies. Okay. We'll see where, where you're trying to draw. Do you see my squares or no? Right yep. there, yeah. So if I click on just good, so right now all are selected. If I click on just good. I'll take it clear. I don't. Tell the public. I know. Would have been quicker to rebuild it. <laughs> <laughs> if I click on good, now I understand what good is, but I have no clue how it compares to poor, like in the other responses. Like I, I, I lose the relationship and it's just not a good experience. Um, we actually tried to analyze this and we had to talk to the client to figure out what their needs and wants was. So with that, um, Chris, let's jump over to. Do you, do you want to cover the top, the top nav? Yeah. Just like all Thanks, these different Chris, pieces. Yeah. So the other thing is they use the built-in navigation that comes with Tableau. And if anybody here has ever worked on or been on a website, quite frankly, people go about four days, four pages deep, and that's it. There's 15 pages here, right? The other thing you did is you prioritized what the first dashboard was. So unless you did it intentionally, go ahead and go on the tab all the way to the front to go to tab one. Unless you did this purposely, you put the purpose on the most important, right? So you would think this is the most important, the next one second, the next one third, the next one fourth, right? It's really hard to navigate and no one even made it through the experience. When we started, I think the initial page had about a thousand people and the last page had four people. So we decided to go to an interest-based um, navigation instead of, you know, just a tab-based navigation. Pull that up, Chris. Yeah, I'm trying to find the right one. Do it, do it. That's what you want. Here's a rework we did. So this is the second one, actually. 
the second one. We did one prior to this, but we didn't want to cover that one as well. So basically what we did is we made it about the community, right? Like we have a story. We're going to tell you about the community, how they live, what they do, and how they interact. The data is all here. The data navigates even better than before, and we'll get into that. Um, Chris, go ahead and click on housing domain. So you can see a radical change from, you know, the initial, you know, the one the other company did. The bottom line here is there, I guess real quick, know your audience and tell a story, right? We're telling a story about a community and we want people to go, wow, here's what happens, you know, to these people. So we want to feel like it's part of an experience and you're journeying through it. The other thing I want to point out right off the bat is that the left navigation, we started using the, the data as what we call drivers. We drive the experience with these. So you can see under communities, if I click on, I can see right off the bat that Greater Milwaukee has less people in this survey. So if I click on that, did it That's isolate? It. Yep. Oh, yeah, that is now, awesome. yeah, that is now only looking at people in Greater Milwaukee. And if I want to jump real quick and check out, like, let's say Seattle compared to Milwaukee, or well, that's fine too. I can see real quick who answered what and their thing. Um, we use meaningful colors. So green is good, you know, yellow is okay, or green is excellent, yellow is okay. Um, but then we got red for poor. These are color, these are color stories everybody understands. A lot of time people try to force new colors and be, I don't know, either trendy or, you know, kind of designer-esque, colors should be very meaningful and people should understand them upon seeing them. Um, also on the navigation, if you notice when we click the other dashboard, if we clicked one thing, everything else went away. On this one, we can click a city, we can click if they were a member or not, and we can even click their age group. And now we have the answer to our questions, right? So the first question on that page is well-maintained, safe, low-income housing. We know exactly what the people in Grand Rapids that were not AARP members at the age 65 through 74 were. So 19% out of, 90% of 63 yep. is your answer. So it makes it really, really easy to do your job, to analyze. Also, the, the interface on this, it makes it easy for everybody to analyze. Another thing we did here that seems understated, but it's worth talking about, the data is the hero. We could easily fill this page with really pretty pictures and you know, taking up a lot of real estate, but we want people to focus on the data. So that's why you see the data's got the biggest chunk, the biggest story to tell. Another change you're gonna see here, rounded corners. So we use rounded corners and there's two reasons. One, it's just, a design aesthetic that is in right now and is very pleasing, right? So everybody's using that. Two is rounded corners. There's studies out there that show rounded corners actually help keep people engaged in the square there is, they're in. So like if you had a squared corner, it actually pushes the eye away from the experience. So there's a lot of reasons we did that. Let's go to talk a little bit about navigation. Um, Unless you had something else, Chris, you want yeah, to before, talk before I was going to I was going to mention one one of the things I know that um, that you work on a lot, um, and you mentioned this a little bit with having having the color story be meaningful. Um, I think in Tableau, it's um, having um, you know it's very common to use your your brand colors um, on the whole, whole color shelf. Um, can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, yeah. So there's a there's a classic example. So. And ARP would be a good example too, but and colors mean different things to different companies is number one. So imagine building a dashboard for a firefighter, their brain, red means bad, blue means good, right off the bat, right? So color has meaning is number one. Two is there's a study out there where somebody that was working at Harley Davidson used the corporate colors to tell the data story. And those colors were actually just orange and black. So you know, profit was orange, you know, loss was black, um, attendance was black, you know, like you can't tell what's going on when you put your corporate colors in there. You also might be associating your colors or your actions with a negative statement. So for example, 
let's say your colors were orange and black and use black on the dashboard to point out loss. Well, now everybody that's looking at these dashboards is going to associate the bad behavior with the black of your brand. So you definitely don't want to do that. Like you want to keep your data out of, you want to keep your corporate color story out of the data and you want to keep it in the background. So that's kind of what we recommend doing. Um, Chris, that's about all I got, unless you feel like I missed something. Okay. No, I think you're good. Let's, um, let's run back to your uh, tips here and see if we missed anything. So, so to recap, the data is the hero. You know, when you start adding design elements and punching up your thing, do not let the design overpower the data. That's why you're doing this is for the data. Second is navigation. You know, web standard navigation inside of Tableau will serve you well and do wonders. Um, design element. You guys saw the example between the coffee dashboard and the coffee dashboard rework that we did having a design element really, really, really can help. Rounded corners, two reasons. One, they look great, but two, there's actually studies out there that the squared corners push away from an experience. Um, the story, tell a story. Don't be afraid to really, when you're telling a data story and you're trying to walk somebody through that, don't be afraid to tell a story. You know, it, it really helps with engagement and it'll get people to see the secondary data that you're actually using to validate your um, findings. Meaningful colors, can't stress it enough. Everybody knows like, if you see a gold star, everybody knows a gold star is good, right? If you see a stoplight like red, yellow, green, everybody knows what that is. Use meaningful colors, you know? Um, and that goes to even keeping your colors out of um, the data story that are your corporate colors. Um, the next one is, use common data as drivers. So we use it to drive the experience is why we call them drivers. So if you, if you remember we had, you could click on a county, you could click on um, if they remember or not. That's a common data set that was worked on all 15 dashboards, right? You can use that and a user doesn't have to retrain their brain every time they go to a next thing. They know how to navigate that data because the same data is there and especially keep that data on the right side or left side, apologies. Um, and the last, I didn't really touch on it a lot. Know your audience, you know, is this data for public facing data? Meaning it's just gonna be on a website, somebody's gonna hit it, somebody's gotta look at it and you gotta engage them. Or is this for three people in accounting, right? The problem with doing data for a living is you want the most logical answer you can possibly get. The problem is you're in an illogical world. So if you tailor your experiences to your audience, you're gonna be more successful. Like if your goal is to get a CEO to listen to you, don't design for everybody else. Design just to get the CEO to understand what you're trying to tell them. And Chris, that's it. All right, great. So we went, went a little bit out of order just because that way uh, you got a little bit of a um, variation between me talking all the time and Kevin. Um, so, so with our whole whole uh, PDA, so we went uh, purpose uh, attraction, and then now 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 data story is kind of where I'm going to go next. So let me let me jump into uh, this example, and um, this is one. I don't know if it's still so, so still a part of Tableau Desktop, but this is a dashboard that actually Tableau we we used to ship kind of with their with their product as some as examples uh, that you would get. Um, so, so in looking at this, I mean, it looks, it looks okay. It's got, I mean, there's not like crazy colors going on. It's, 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 it's kind of decent. But um, when we're talking about um, kind of, kind of the whole, 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 whole Excel mindset, um, I think that really the biggest issue I have is that these, the, the, these are quick filters, which are, which are way, way overused in my opinion, um, don't really help you. Because if you think about it, um, all, all these quick filters are, 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 are alphabetical. So if I wanted to tell you which state um, ha has the least problem with weight, I, I really have no way to tell you. Or state or actually region, I don't even have a way, way to tell you. Because it's just, actually, just, just like, just like, just like, just, 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 just um, alphabetical. That's, that's really all I have. Um, so, so one thing we do a lot of, and you saw it on the AARP dashboard, is instead of using quick filters, we use actions. And so exact same dashboard, 
except and also by the way this one this one is supposed to be looking at your at your county well i don't have any way to get the county other than hovering over all of them which also by the way um, um boulder isn't even in here so i can't even tell that kind of kind of makes me mad but you know um so if you use actions versus filters you get a lot more information so let's just go over to the same dashboard and all i've done is just replace uh, replace the uh, the quick filters with graphs and then if you know how to use actions it is as simple as dashboard actions we got a couple here but we could have pretty much done a add action filter and just chose an all to all so source sheet as all target sheet as all and then we're going to use all of our values that would also have probably worked we did a little bit fine-tuning on like we didn't want to filter these graphs. We wanted those to be if you highlighted and that kind of stuff. She so can get into all that. But for the same purpose, now I've got now this is actually not in alphabetic order. Um, it's 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 actually in order of the of the whole, whole, whole obesity percentage. So I can click on the south, and it's going to do the same thing as my quick filter does. But it now lets me lets me see what's going on. It also filters these states. So now I can tell you not just which state in general. But I can tell you which state in, in the South and which county in the South. And I can do the same thing with the West. I can tell you that, you know, our state is, is, the, is the lowest. And here's your counties. And, and like I said, we don't have, have, have Boulder listed. Not sure why. So this is, this is to me, this is leagues better um, just from, from, a, from a general, general kind of perspective. But it doesn't do some of the things that we learned from Kevin's, Kevin Jux treatment. So one of the things he mentioned is, is that um, having darker backgrounds, and this is a great opportunity to use your corporate colors as, as the background. So Tableau always ships with, or starts out with a blank canvas, a white canvas. But, 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 but as you know, white is the brightest color. So even though you don't realize it, your eye is actually competing with all the white on this dashboard versus if I just do, if I just do two things, I'm gonna move, move, move the navigation to the left, and I'm just going to change this to a dark background. So, oh, I did, I did actually throw three, three things. For some reason, Tableau defaulted this to the desktop browser size. Um, uh, it, I mean, which I understand kind of why, but, but most browsers are, are bigger, or most desktops um, have a, um, at least these days, have a much larger resolution. So we kind of always default to, to a letter landscape. That way, in case somebody's actually printing, uh, that, 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 that definitely helps out. But but here, so we've chosen a darker background. It really lets that data pop, and you're looking at the data versus versus the actual background. So it's a much more professional look. Does the same functions. I can still filter and do all these things and that kind of thing. Um, let me let me also tell two two, two things about the the map. Um, maps are maps are very very popular, um, but really they're almost the worst thing to use for actually analysis. Because maps, um, they're really just like a scatter plot. They're the same thing as one of these down here. And and the reason to use use a scatter plot is to look for groupings or or for um, um, or or for or for like or for like some sort of outliers. Well, you know, I could you know I could look at these and see these counties and figure that out. Well, kind of a map is really the same thing because it's just a x x and y axis. Um, and, but most of the time, what you're looking for is groupings. Well, I can't see any in this. So I'll show you one example that we did find one. So here, if I look, look at the Northeast, it looks like almost all of this top section is green, except for one, one county. And that's, uh, that's uh, Waldo. So where's, where, where's Waldo? Well, there he is. And, and, and uh, he's obese, apparently. Um, so I don't, I don't so, think that was very nice. Sorry. Well, I don't really, I don't really know Waldo, but <laughs> if, if I, if, if I did, sorry. So, so, so in this case, I think a map works because I did find that little nugget, but nine times out of 10, those really don't exist with, with maps. So that's, that's kind of why the second reason. So not just using, um, using the, the bar charts to, to use for navigation. It's also important to kind of prepare those with, with, with the map, because if I just gave you just this one sheet here, and said, okay, tell me, t tell me the top, top, top five counties, or top five states, or even the top region. You can't do it from this, from this, this view. So I think often pairing 
just pairing a map with a with a with a bar chart really helps because now no matter what I click on I can tell you this is your worst state this is your this is your best state worst county best county right so I can answer a lot more information and you might might want to know you may want to know give me the give me the bottom 10 well there's your bottom 10 and they don't seem to be all next next to each other because you're like again you're looking for for uh, grouping um, so I think pairing a bar chart with a map is definitely key. Um, while I'm here, I'm also going to show you a little trick. Um, I'm going to use uh, the, the first map. I'll just duplicate this one really, really, really quick. So, so one of the things that 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 you know, that, you know, that like Tableau gives you is the ability to um, uh, to change change the kind of style of map you have. So I could choose a, a dark color map, right? But if I go into, I'll just drag it into the same 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 dashboard. So so I chose the dark color, but that doesn't really match. Now now granted we use a lot of blacks and grays here, so so I might might kind of get get away with that. But but let's let's say that your corporate colors were blue. Well you you want to you want to have your map actually appear clear, and and you can't do that with just the just kind of kind of the preset layout that Tableau gives you. So what you can do is this couple of tricks. To be able to make this background match exactly like I have have this one, so the first thing that you would do, like you would do any other chart you want to color the background, is if you right click in a blank area, you choose Format, and you want to go to your uh, paint paint bucket here, and um, and here you want to leverage. We ha we have a um, th this is this is this is this is one of our Tableau templates, by the way, that makes it easy for you to format things nicely. And what we've done is we give you the colors that we would use. So for any graph areas, we're going to use color. Two three two three two three. So I would go to my paint bucket. I would choose more colors, and I would just type in two three two three two three. So once you have that once, it's going to show up in your little panel, so you can use it again. So I've so I've now colored the background, and and for maps, you also want to color color the paint. So so both of those have to be colored. So so I know what you're thinking. Okay, this didn't work. It didn't it doesn't look the same as this one yet. Well, the reason why is because maps also come with by default, if you go into map layers, they have some 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 layers in here. So if I take off my base and my land cover, then all of a sudden you start seeing those colors of the pane and and the sheet. Me personally, I like to get rid of the uh, you know the uh, region names and even the state names to be able to do that. So this one should match a lot better. Uh, Tableau still you know gives you some things you got to take care of. You got to turn off the title, and there's this little bar uh, band around it. Uh, format again, go to your go to your window pane, and it's going to be these these uh, dividers here. They're going to put these in your in your way. So there, I'll get off so you can see. So now those two look more 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 uh, transparent. Um, so it's kind of a kind of a better look and feel. This is this is still this is a way to get your data to the to the uh, front. So um, so with that being said. So when we were going through this dashboard, Kevin and I were going through it, and uh, we're, we're trying to figure out, okay, what's the what's the whole whole, whole data story? And we 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 use this one, we use the one that Tableau built, and we just really couldn't come up with a good answer. So it didn't it, like we have some things here. We have few fruits and vegetables, and exercise, and if they're a smoker or not. And so the question I would ask is, okay, well, do do these or some combination of these? Do they play into the to, 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 to the obesity of the of the county or state? So here, I don't really have an have an answer. Um, so 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 as, so as as an analyst, I actually may build something that's maybe not for you know for actually public consumption, but maybe it's for my, my actually analysis. So when I dove into to the data set, I realized, hey, there's some other things they have here. They have a high blood pressure, and they have if they have a physician or not. So a couple other metrics that didn't even make it into the dashboard that were part of the data set. So I'm like, okay, well, let's, let's go ahead and use those. So instead of just using what Tableau gave, I built this kind of quick, quick, quick analysis chart. And so in the top left, we have, we have, we have actually obesity by state. Uh, this is the same, uh, same chart that is right here. Just, it's a, it's a little bit, it's a little bit, um, it's a made to fit, fit to view. That's why it looks a little smaller, but so same exact chart. And and as you learned in the last one, we have our we have our have our rate our higher rate of obesity is dark blue, and our and our and our low uh, low is dark green, 
right? And so just off the bat, without even doing any filtering, you can start seeing there's some dark blue that's in the top, you know, seven or eight percent, dark blue in the top 10, 15 percent, you know, still kind of in the top, definitely in the top. And then for, you know, for this one, it's kind of spaced out. I can make that easier by using, using the highlight function to be able to highlight where those top ones are. And so now I start to kind of draw, draw some, draw some, 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 some uh, correlations. I see, okay, well, by state, it looks like, you know, um, it looks like, like the states that are more obese kind of have smokers, or I'm sorry, uh, people, people with high, high, high blood pressure are, are kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of all over the map versus these other ones seem to kind of be in the top, top percentile. You know, they eat too, fruit, too few fruits and vegetables. They smoke. They don't have a doctor. They're not exercising, that kind of thing. So really quickly, I was able to do some analysis, and so my, so my data story that I would go go to in my in my finished dashboard might might try to get a better way to, way to actually visualize this. Um, knowing that we were looking at counties, we did the same thing for for county, uh, you know, uh, and it's and it's helpful, but here it seems to be a lot more spread out. So it doesn't seem when I look at the the top, I'll try to do better last side than that. Look at the top ones. They're really not hovering at the top. So, you know, by a statewide, it seems to be easier to nail down than counties. It's still a little hev hev heavily weighted at the top of these. There's fewer and far between, but it's a much more broader range. And then, so, Chris, I, I hate to interrupt. Um, no, I'm, you're just good. Gonna, I'm looking at the clock and I just want to make sure we have time for everybody's questions. Sure. Um, to play around and stump the chump. Yep. Um, if anybody's got any tableau roadblocks they have or some questions yeah i think that's, uh, that's a, a good point let me let me jump back to um to our uh wherever this is but I, I did want to point out one more thing and chris i hate to say do this to you but can you open up one more web browser and go to tableau templates we didn't really cover that and your demo had that in it this is one of the products we offer these are pre-built templates go ahead and go to free templates when we talk about ui and ux design we've actually put a lot of those strategies into these drag and drop Tableau templates um, that some are, we build custom ones for accounts that you saw earlier, but some of these are free, some are stock and everything like that. It's templates.com. We won't spend a lot of time here today, but just know it's out here for you guys as a resource if you need it. Um, sure. And with that said, we're gonna move into QA. So, we're I'm going gonna to cover this, I'm gonna cover this really, really kind of quick oh, here. Sorry. So what, what, I, what I did on the last thing uh, is, you know, use actions, not filters. Um, you want to pair maps with, with bar charts. Um, if you have a darker background color, that really pops the data out. Um, I gave you the kind of the map uh, background color trick. And then just having the right, the right, the right, right data story, not just, throwing, uh, not just throwing information out there and expect somebody to figure it out. Having the right data story matters. So... All right, I think we're good there, Kevin. And uh, if you want to, next slide. And this so is stump the chump. So for those me. of you who don't know, Chris is the chump. Um, it's just a <laughs> playful way to talk about it. But Chris is here, and obviously you can understand he knows Tableau inside and out, and my expertise as well. Um, we're open to any questions or anything in Tableau that's stumping you. We're happy to help out. So, so um, are they supposed to raise their hand, or how's yeah, that going to work? Over in the side, you should see an opportunity to either raise your hand. No questions. That's fantastic. Sure someone's got one and can't figure this oh, dumb thing out. Here's one. All right. When you do a dual axis line and bar chart, is there a way I can have the line be on top of the bar? Sure. So let's do that really, really, really quick. So I'll just open up a new, um, new, uh, and, and this is going to be really, really kind of obvious whenever you see it, um, if I've got this right. So I'll just connect to Superstore, um, maybe. There we go. So sales uh, by product subcategory. Actually, let's make that better. Sales, product subcategory, and then we want to drag in profit, right? So pull in profit is going to give us a separate chart. So I'm going to change this to a line, and then we want to put those on the same, or actually want to make that a dual axis, what you said, right? So dual axis, it changed my bar. Let's put that back. So, so if your if your if your bar is going behind, it's just the order order of these two pills. So literally just dragging um, dragging profit to be 
to be on the right hand side, puts it in front. That's that's the way to get that line to go in front of the bars. See that? That's behind, and that's in front. Did that answer your question? All right, good deal. It did. Does anybody else have any questions? Oh, looks like, do we have another? No, nope, Ray just said thanks. You're welcome, Ray. Okay. Oh, um, no. Clay, hey Clay, how's it going? Re recognize recognize that name. You show how to build a bar chart um, that shows variation from a standard. Um, can you can you unmute new Clay for a second? Uh, and let me see, get him to Clay tell Stewart? us what he means. Yeah. Then Clay, you should be able to talk now. Do we got you, Clay? I think I think I know what he means, but I wanted to make sure. So um, if you can't, um, so like, like so, I think kind of, kind of, um, I think kind of like this. We might be what you're talking about. You have budget and you have spend, right? So if you're, part? yeah, I don't know. Can you hear me now? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I hear you now. Um, yeah, so I think you're right on it. So if I have like a standard of um, my budget is seven hundred thirty-six million. I want to make that my line and then above or below that. Yeah. Yeah. So, 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 so first off, if you, if you have, you get, um, so, so, if, so, 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 in fact, you've got your budget, you should, you should be calling us by the way. Um, so <laughs> you got, you got different problems if that, that's your budget. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's kind of the same thing. I built this graph here. You'll need to, I'll, I'll, I'll kind of do it again real quick. So budget and then product, right? So now we have that. Um, I'll go ahead and, flip it on its side just to make it look a little bit better. And then, and so what he's asking is he's okay, well, I want spend to be, to be, to be kind of part of this. Well, if I did the same trick where I drag spend to the same axis, they, they kind of come up as, as these different charts. And I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to copy, copy measure names or sorry, not on different, different bars. So, so the trick to get these to be the same bar. And I think what you want is you want to be able to quickly see if you're over and I, I don't have any that are over. Because I'm 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 kind of faking it with this data set, but literally it's just taking this measure names off your shelf, and then putting that on size. Okay, so so at so at 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 a beginning, it's going to stack them on actually top top of each other, but then what you want to do is go to analysis, uh, stack marks, and turn it off. So this starts both bars at actually zero. So then I would have, and I might want to switch the order. You can just drag this down. So I could say, okay, well my well my budget is my dark blue bar, and my and my spend is my is, is my light blue bar. I'll do this entire view to make it a little bit bigger, and then you can adjust the sizes to make it look uh, look a little, little bit better. So what would happen is is um, you know if I if I had more spend than budget, then it would kind of burst out the end of the the bar. So it kind of kind of like it's like a thermometer that's exploding. Uh, does that does that answer your question? Is that a good yes. answer? Yes, it does. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, that, that's that's kind of kind of a quick way. You can do also do it with with uh, reference lines, um, kind of the same thing. Um, I could have easily you know drawn a, drawn a line in there. Um, uh, so so a lot of times we would we we would common size. So instead of doing it as an absolute value, we'd do it as a percentage. So that way we know that we know that the reference line would be a hundred percent of your of your uh, budget, and that way it would kind of kind of group them all up. That takes a little bit more doing, but this is this is kind of the fastest way to do it. Okay. And he's already back to an attendee, so he can't hear you. Does anybody else have any questions you'd like the chump to answer or help you out with? I think we're going to come up with a better name than Stump the Chump. I, I really like Stump maybe, the Chump. If anybody has any, oh, maybe somebody has an idea. I would come up with worse, actually. All right. Uh, print, okay, so go ahead, Heather. Uh, yeah, often um, questions that I get um, from students in classes when I'm teaching um, are, around how do you best show KPI indicators? Um, I also get questions around working with multiple data sources. So yeah, join let me, blend union, so. Let me, let me come back to that real quick. So, so, so Ray also asked, he said that um, he lets, lets uh, users change the level of aggregation with some, some, some calculation like this. So when, when they choose day, they wanna do the event date um, and, that, and, that, and that kind of a way. Um, so, um, um, if you have um, uh, if you have if you have um, if you have if 
you want to change it between week and month, yeah, I think you've kind of got it the right way. The only thing I would tell you is, uh, let me just show show his his his, his uh, formula. So this, I don't know if you guys can see his see these questions or not. I don't um, think so. Can. This okay. So th this is this is kind of kind of kind of the formula that Ray is using. So it's pretty obvious. You have a have have, have this parameter that you know that lets you select day, week, month, quarter, year. Uh, the only thing I, I would say is um, is I think that, and I'm trying to think of the best way to tell you to do this is um, if you just use the date trunk formula here. Um, I don't think you have the ability to um, to get like you asked for for multiples. So I, I would probably put this formula inside of another field, so create a calculated field out of it, and that way you could um, you could you could maybe have have some more control. But that's really the best way to do it. You know, to to, to do it like you know to 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 do it. There's no real like on the fly what way to way to make that happen. So sorry, there's not a quicker way. And Chris, you got okay. one more question in there. Okay. Uh, how do I see SQL coding, uh, SQL code Tableau is using? Um, right. How that works is, is this, I'll close this one out. Can so you hear you go, me? I, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I'm, I'm horrible with names. Uh, no, that's, that's fine. So if you go to, if you go to um, edit, edit your data source. Oh man, where's she at? Oh, I better mute that. Okay. So here. Uh, this is all, this is all not um, SQL because it's going against them. Um, let me try. Let me try to do a fresh one. But what should happen? I don't. I don't have a SQL connection. But in your in your uh, data data window, once you once you get inside, um, let me try to think. There's gonna. I'm trying to get there without getting there. Uh, so I'm trying to do. So let's just try and see if I could go. Once I get in the window, it should give me something. Yeah. So what should happen if you go to data right here? Then there's going to be um, it doesn't show up on Excel, but there's going to be something in this range that, that that'll say so, so it's actually convert to convert to to, to a SQL, and that will show you exactly what it's doing. Is that what you're wanting to know? Want to know how, how the SQL is working for that, or is it more for what what actually queries it's running? Yeah. Okay. So that that was it. So you want to see the custom SQL. So that's definitely how you would see that. Um, you go back to Ray for a second. He wants to automatically do it. If a user selects over seven days, it would be a day. If it selects for six weeks, it would change to a month. Yeah, so that that's um, okay. I mean, I, I know what you're asking now. Let me go back to um, your formula. So, if you had separate fields, so you so you did you did kind of the one part about you know choosing choosing a value or choosing uh, some metric. So let me do this. Uh, create a new parameter. So I'll just do um, you know choose or choose uh, time, okay? So this is the same thing that you're already uh, doing on a float, but a string, so list, so day. Um, month. So, okay. so I currently do it with a parameter like that, but uh, I was wondering well, if- Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. There's one, 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 one more key step. So so you have this one, but you don't have, have, have the next step. So that's, that, that's, your, that's your parameter. But what you want to know is this. So let me go, let me just pull in, I'll just pull in sales over time. Okay. So here, here's the kind of the main difference is if I take my order, order date and I create a new field and I say, you know, day, and I do the same thing you did here, date trunk um, of day. I think that's going to be lower, lower, lower case, by the way. I think this is a specific. So you have, you have this formula here, okay? And I, I would normally um, call them something like, you know, date, day, so I have them all grouped, grouped up together. And I'll duplicate this one for a second and edit, date, month, same thing, month, right? So, so now what happens is I actually create one more field and I say create calculated field and I'm gonna call it the same thing as my other one, choose time. Uh, if, you know, or to, in your, your case, you did case, uh, case, choose time, um, you know, when, when day, then uh, day, this was the one we did, else um, month. Okay, so, so now I have these two fields. 
So instead of using your year field here, here you use your choose date field, um, wherever that went. Choose choose time. So I put this one here here instead. Okay. Now this one could be whatever you want. So exact date. So now if I show this show show this control. Now if I go to month, it's going to summarize. Uh, why is it not coming up? Edit. There we go. So it should summarize by those. Okay. So, so, they, so the key is you have, 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 have the parameter, but you need to have this one also. Is that, is that what you're missing? Um, no, so that's exactly what I'm currently doing, and that works for most uh, scenarios. I just have the user be able to choose the level aggregation, but I currently had a request. I have like spark lines that just show summaries, and I have like a start and end date parameter instead, and I just wanted to do mm -hmm change those based on like if they showed more than two yeah. less than a week it would change to a daily spark but then if the the date range was longer than two weeks it would automatically change to yeah. weekly got it got it yeah there's um so so the, the problem with the, so you're using so if i got it right you're using um uh you know kind of these things you're using kind of a date date uh, range type of type of filter Right. Well, I currently use a parameter for start and end date, but I don't know if that's uh, bad practice. Yeah, so, so some, something that we do quite often, uh, let me see if I can uh, pull it out really quickly, is so we've kind of, kind, of, kind of gotten away from using any sort of date filters because one, as we've talked about, they're not really visual. Um, they don't tell you what you should be looking at. And so your, your users are, are kind of uh, assuming that, that they need to, you know, that they need to pick, pick, pick the date. So we do a lot of times, I'm going to get you into, uh, let's see here. I think this one's going to have it. That's not it. Where's our... Um, Your guys' calendars on the side? Yeah. That's, I think that's kind of the best way. I'm trying to get a, the right one for you. We got one of these here somewhere that will have it. Didn't like it. Why is it not there, Kevin? Where am I miss? Oh, custom templates. Nope. Um, Sorry, I was on I thought it was right? starter. I'm looking for like the, the main starter template. Um, so it should be there, right? Yeah, it should be that one. This doesn't look right. Maybe, maybe, maybe it is. Let's just open it and see. Maybe it just, the, the, the thumbnail might be wrong. Um, but yeah, so a lot of times we use, okay, um, that's, that's fine. So a lot of times we use things like, things like this. So instead of having a date range, so the great thing about this is I can, I can actually select, select all of these months. So now I'm actually comparing just that month across those years. Right, and so this is a much easier way to be able to navigate any sort of date you want, because because then you want to look at all actually Mondays. Well, that well that gives you every single Monday. You know, so now so now your trend line is just on Mondays for that week. You can't do that with uh, with I mean, sort of sort of sort of sort of a filter. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, so so this is this is kind of a this is kind of a more visual way, and now you've got you've got the color stuff to know. Wow, so so Mondays or Sundays in March are not really good. So what's what's actually happening there? Okay, wow, we we sold a lot of office machines, but we really lost money on these tables and these things. Okay, who's who's actually buying those, right? So that's that's kind of what we would end up doing is kind of trying to drive towards something that's visual that you can use a much different ways All than right, than trying to to try. Thank you. Yeah, sure thing. All right, so lost track. I think I answered. That's that's pretty much an hour. I'm not seeing any other questions here, guys. Okay. So I think that concludes Stump the Chump unless uh, somebody has a last minute question and we can come back to it if somebody does. Um, but Chris, you mind going back to the deck real quick? Oh, sure. Trying to think where it is. Here it is. Is that where you want to end? Kevin, you're on mute. So guys, that's our first webcast uh, webinar. So if you guys have any uh, tips or insight for us on how to put a better one of these together for you guys, but we're going to try to do one of these once a month and help everybody along with Tableau and get everybody kind of on the path to becoming ninjas. Um, if we can help you guys out at NER, again, we're Boulder Insight. You can just go to our website. Here's a contact page and reach out to us.
We'll follow up with an email from here, maybe a survey asking what you thought of this. Um, any feedback would be greatly appreciated. And we really hope this was helpful. Chris, anything else? No, nope, I think that's it for me. All right. You guys have a great day. Thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it.